The CX bond is polar. Carbon is partially positive. This is because thalides are electronegative, giving the carbon a partial positive charge. The CX bonds get less polar, longer, and weaker in going from fluorine to iodine. A nucleophile can react at the electron diffusion carbon. If you will remember, nucleophiles are species with electrons to share. The halide becomes the living group to produce this new compound. This reaction is called nucleophilic substitution. A living group is a substituent that can live as a relatively stable entity. Weak Bronsted bases, or just termed here as bases, are good living groups because of their relative stability. In our case here for halides, iodide is a better living group than fluoride because its conjugate acid is the strongest. As you may imagine, there are many possible nucleophiles. They may be roughly categorized as either strong or weak. Take note that nucleophilicity is measured by relative rates of reaction, while basicity is based on the position of equilibrium. In basicity, we are more concerned about the strength of the bond being formed. While in nucleophilicity, we are concerned about how fast the nucleophile can attack the electron division atom. The conjugate base is always a stronger nucleophile, such as this, wherein the hydroxide is a stronger nucleophile compared to water. The amide is a stronger nucleophile compared to ammonia. Within the same period and formal charge, less electronegative atoms are more nucleophilic. For example, nitrogen in amide is less electronegative than oxygen, and so amide is more nucleophilic than hydroxide. Ammonia is more nucleophilic than water. Nucleophilicity parallels basicity with the same atoms. For example, with oxygen, the nucleophilic atom in carboxylic acid, hydroxide, and alkoxide. Since in these three species, the alkoxide is the most basic, then the alkoxide is the most nucleophilic if we ignore the size of the alkyl group. In water and alcohols, these are polar protic solvents, larger atoms are more nucleophilic. Larger atoms are more polarizable, thus their electron clouds can be easily distorted towards an electrophile. Sulfur is bigger than oxygen, and this atom is more polarizable and would be more nucleophilic in polar protic solvents. Lastly, nucleophilicity decreases with bulkiness. Those nucleophiles with big substituents have lower rates of reactions and thus are less nucleophilic. In nucleophilic substitution, two events occur. The attack of the nucleophile to the electron deficient atom and the departure of X or your leaving group. Whichever occurs first among these events affects the outcome of the reaction. One possible type of nucleophilic substitution is called SN1. Here, the CX bond is broken first before the nucleophile attacks the electrophilic carbon. 
the initial bond breaking step leads to a carbocation intermediate and this part of the reaction is slow and considered the rate determining step. Take note that when you have carbocations, they may rearrange to form more stable carbocations. The nucleophile can approach either side of the planar carbocation. This is a fast step. In the case of my example, there is a proton here that can be taken by another water molecule or another solvent to form the final compound, which is an alcohol. Because the breaking of the CX bond is the slow step, our rate of reaction is dependent only on the concentration of the alkyl halide, the reactant in that step. And this is the basis for SN1. SN1 is a unimolecular nucleophilic substitution. Polar protic solvents promote the formation of carbocation and its stabilization. Polar protic solvents are capable of stabilizing the carbocation and the anion produced in the band breaking process. This stabilization lowers the energy of this intermediate and by Hammond's postulate could also lower the energy of the transition state. Once the carbocations form, the nucleophile, which could also be the solvent of the reaction, can initiate the attack and form the substitution product. The reaction is called solvolysis if a solvent molecule is the nucleophile. It is called hydrolysis if the solvent is water. When the leaving group leaves from a chiral center of an optically active compound via SN1, racemization will occur. This is because the carbocation has a trigonal planar arrangement and the nucleophile can attack on opposite phases of this intermediate in equal fashion. Thus, if you start from the optically active alkyl halide here in the presence of methanol, the product would not be optically active because it is a one-to-one -one mixture of the R and S isomers. The whole process here is called racemization. SN1 is favored by weak nucleophiles, alkyl halides that can form a stable carbocation. Benzyl, allyl, and tertiary halides are most susceptible to SN1 reaction. Benzyl carbocation looks like this. The positive charge is on a carbon right next to a benzene ring. Allyl carbocation has a positive charge right next to an alkenyl group and tertiary carbocations are familiar to you. Be aware that methyl and primary halides do not undergo SN1. Polar protic solvents such as water and alcohol favor SN1. They can participate in hydrogen bonding and they can serve as source of protons to stabilize the anions formed. Nucleophilicity in polar protic solvents favor larger atoms because of their polarizability. And so, iodide will be more nucleophilic compared to fluoride. Fluorine being a small atom can be readily surrounded and inactivated by polar protic solvents. Another nucleophilic substitution is possible. We call it SN2. Here, the nucleophile approaches the electrophilic carbon before the CX bond is broken. To produce a pentavalent carbon at the transition state, right here. As you will notice, this reaction 
is only one step. Bond breaking and bond forming processes are simultaneous or concerted. Since it is only one step, our rate is equal to the rate constant times the concentration of the alkyl halide and the nucleophile. Thus, our reaction is bimolecular or second order. The backside attack of the nucleophile results in an inversion of configuration and so in SN2 mechanism a stereo control of the reaction is possible. For example, in a structure such as this, an SN2 attack by the hydroxide will reverse the stereochemistry of this carbon and transform this compound from cis to trans. What are the factors that will promote an SN2 reaction? You need here a nucleophile that is strong, strong enough to push a halide or any other leaving group away from carbon in a concerted fashion. Spatial arrangement of atoms or groups near the reacting site affect the rate of an SN2 reaction. Nucleophiles need to approach the backside of this carbon, and if the carbons are attached to large substituents, the reaction becomes slower. Hence, methyl bromide will react the fastest in this series. As groups attached to this carbon become larger, the rate of an SN2 reaction becomes slower. In fact, this compound here is nearly inert in an SN2 process. The order of reactivity for the halide is methyl is the most reactive, followed by primary halides, which include benzyl and allyl halides. Tertiary halides are unreactive in SN2 reactions. Better leaving group gives faster reactions. Thus, if X here is iodine, the reaction is faster than if it is fluorine. Polar aprotic solvents are excellent solvents for SN2. Polar aprotic solvents does not have a proton attached to an electronegative atom. Examples of this are dimethyl sulfoxide, dimethyl formamide, acetonitrile, acetone, and many others. Polar aprotic solvents, although capable of stabilizing a positive charge, are less capable of stabilizing nucleophiles. Nucleophiles are naked in polar aprotic solvents, means that they are unsolvated and hence are more reactive and readily attacks the electrophilic carbon. Nucleophilicity here is reverse compared to polar protic solvents. To write here is the most nucleophilic. SN2 reactions are important in organic chemistry. Take note that leaving groups here do not need to be halide. There are many possible leaving groups that can transform into weak bases. With a variety of different nucleophiles, different types of molecules can be generated in a process called functional group transformation.